Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. Let's get into episode three of our Let's Play. Had an absolutely fantastic live stream with all of you earlier today for the Heretic Run. Honestly, it's been super, super cool seeing the differences between doing this game in an Imperialist run and doing it as a Heretic. Uh, just really, really impressed with the game thus far. Hopefully it holds up in the fourth and fifth acts that I have not experienced yet. Um, in our last episode, we uh, recruited Cassia and did the ritual that allowed her to take over as navigator of the ship. And we had a nice little conversation with her starting off on our romance. I do plan to romance Cassia uh, in this uh, playthrough. I don't think there's anybody else for an imperialist run that I would try to uh, flirt with a romance as well. From my understanding, romances do not conflict with each other in this game. So you can romance multiple people uh, through the game until a certain point where you basically have to choose. So I could romance more people, but I feel like Lord Iceland is the type of person who chooses who he's gonna pair with for political reasons, not for love or flighty emotions, obviously. Uh, having a union with Cassia would have its benefits, considering she's also a noble and the scion of a major house, and so he sees it as to his advantage, where the rest of them, it would more so be for emotions. But on our heretic run, we're definitely going to dibble and dabble and see what some of the different romances are like. All right, we already had a conversation with Cassia. Now we're, let's have a conversation with Victus, and then we will go out and do another mission. A thin pale woman stands out among the rest of the crew. There's a thick bundle of cables coming out of the back of her skull and disappearing under her ceremonial garment, and you see the grate of a quietly humming fox where her mouth should be. The woman sees you and bows her head in a respectful greeting. How may I serve you, Lord Captain? Fellowship, connect me to the vessel's main channel. I wish to bolster the morale of my crew succeeded. The Vox Master nods obediently and presses several switches on the device she is holding. It is done, Lord Captain. You address the crew with a rousing speech and hear your voice roll through the ship, reaching even the normally quiet corners of the vessel. When the broadcast ends, you hear distant shouts of approval. Remind me who you are. Vox Master Octavius Victus Sori Otto of the Ptolemy Dynasty, the current Vox Master serving aboard your vessel. In accordance with the Seneschal's orders, I assume this duty immediately upon the demise of the esteemed Vox Master Septimus, who was my grandfather. What are the Vox Master's duties? I am the ears and the voice of this void ship. I supervise several dozen officers, three times the number of support personnel. We receive, send, encrypt, and decode all incoming and outgoing messages through the ship's internal and external channels, and we also ensure clean communications and the optimal efficiency of the crew's boxcasters. If you ever want to know what worries and concerns your crew are harboring, what your subjects are worth whispering about in local networks after their watches, and what their leaders are clamoring about over shortwave box transmissions, just come and see me. I will satisfy your curiosity. Have the Vox spirits brought you anything interesting lately? Forgive me, Lord Captain. I have no information that would be of interest to you at this moment. Why do you look so strange? My appearance comes from my heritage, generation after generation of people who spent their entire lives in the depths of this void ship. Neither we nor our ancestors have ever left our home, but the same can be said about many denizens of the Imperium's million worlds. We are used to the silence of the cosmos and the voices of the ship. There are thousands of us, but we dwell far from the Lord Captain's upper decks and remain unseen. We are the Voidborn. Where does the word Voidborn come from? Because we are the children born in the void between the stars, be it the womb of a traveling vessel, an orbital satellite, or a forgotten asteroid station. Low gravity, voyages through the warp, and the countless dangers of space travel, everything others hate and dread is second nature to us. Tell me about the lives of the void born in my crew. To us, the groans, creaks, and mummers of the ship sound the way babbling brooks and singing birds do to war dwellers. We hear the ship breathe, know what it is feeling and thinking. 
We are a part of the ship, just like it is a part of us. We perform numerous functions, and there are many officers among our number. Some maintain order and prevent mutiny. Others serve as shepherds and support the crew, and some devote themselves to mending the body and spirit of the vessel. Most of the Void-born are members of large Void ship dynasties that bear responsibility for a certain aspect of the ship's life. For 300 years, the main branch of the Ptolemyan dynasty has produced the ship's box masters, and most of our subordinates come from the cadet houses of the dynasty. How do you find life on the ship? Life has been quite generous to me, Lord Captain. I am the box master, and only the best in the dynasty can become one. By virtue of my skills and position, no one has ever denied me anything. Our family claims a spacious section for its own demise. I also enjoy long walks through the narrow and dimly lit corridors of the ship, listening to the sounds of her activity, falling asleep and waking up to the chanting of hymns, and admiring the stars beyond, of course. How do others on the ship treat you? We look, speak, and move differently from the inhabitants of the planetary worlds. Our way of life, traditions, and quirks frighten these people, just like the darkness of the cosmos. Many believe us to be the bringers of ill fortune, and alas, it is the Voidborn who get the blame for terrible war phenomena during longer voyages. Victus hesitates before continuing. Several years ago, an unfortunate warp jump caused all the food on board to spoil. Fifteen days later, a hungry and furious crew nearly massacred everyone on the lower decks, blaming us for the misfortune and hoping to restock the larders with our flesh. That's insane! <laughs> Restocking their food with your flesh? Crazy! I would have been killed during the mutiny had a dare to last not shown up in the right place at the right time. She came to my rescue, and the scoundrels' fear of her was even greater than their fear of the Voidborn. Looks like you're close friends with Adira. Webs of tiny wrinkles appear at the corners of Victus's eyes, the only hint that the Vox Master is smiling. The Voidborn seldom make friends, especially among the captain's entourage. But you see, many consider Adira to be different. I am different too. We have spent plenty of time in each other's company, discussing regicide over a glass of Amasek. Except Adira changed after one incident, and we started to drift apart. The death of Lord Captain Theodora made her withdraw even more. I do not know if Adira considers me her friend now, but we used to be very, very close. It is good I can still look after her in my own way. Interpreting the Vox Master's emotions based on half a face and a Vox modulated voice is no easy task, but you managed to catch the undercurrent in Victus's words. The Vox Master is not merely saddened by her rift with Adira, she is devastated by it. Have you ever left the ship? Oh, I did once, and it was dreadful. It felt like the massive blue dome overhead could shatter at any moment and fall, and my bones would be crushed by the gravity. Vigdis twitches her shoulders, trying to ward off the flood of memories. The ship is my home, Lord Captain, and I would not trade it even for the bounty of a hundred worlds. I see. Let us return to business. As you wish, Lord Captain. That will be all for now. I live to serve, Lord Captain. Interesting. So she's in love with Adira. Well, you're not gonna like me much this playthrough, but I wish you luck in my heretic run. All right, let's get back out there. So we already did Cassia. Let's go ahead and click here. Scan is required. Let's go ahead and scan this planet. Get the scan. And got some XP, but nothing else. We'll come back here later. Lord Captain, there is some commotion on the officer's deck. The Lady Navigator has left her quarters and is currently in the ward room, where uninitiated crew members are shunning her in terror. Perhaps we should find out what has brought Cassia to the deck. Hmm. I think they updated the loading screens. I don't remember seeing this screen before. Could be wrong. Hi, Lord Captain. My apologies. I... I did not notice your entrance. It pleases me to see you adjusting to life aboard the ship. 
Compared to Yurak 5, your ship is a boundless world of unfamiliar hues. And yet, the abundance of bright colors can at times be wearisome on the eyes. The bridge and the decks are so... clamorous. In my search for a place of quiet, I was fortunate to come upon this islet of serenity filled with rare tomes and practically devoid of color. Point at the book in Cassia's hands. I see you are fond of reading. Actually, no. The events that took place on Urak 5 must have shaken you. Are you well? Hmm. Now we're going to go with our first choice. Point at the book in Cassia's hands. I see you are fond of reading. Oh, this. <laughs> I found this fascinating read on one of the shelves. And I must say, it has caught my eye. It's every chapter is written in verse. I find it so beautiful and enrapturing. Yurak 5 had a vast archive of its own, of course. Although, most of the works within had to do with scholarly disciplines of some sort or another. Only in my sparse moments of respite was I allowed to escape into the pages of more embellished works. Cassia gently brushes the dust off the cover with her thin, clawed hand. Her eyes filled with longing after reminiscing about her lost home. Your only attendant is your valet from Yurak 5. Do my servants not measure up to your standards? Uh, no, no. It is not that at all, Lord Captain. It is just that Uve is quite capable of carrying out his duties by himself. He is well accustomed to my... my whims and preferences. Cassia cringes ever so slightly, adjusts the adornment on her forehead, then awkwardly hides her clawed fingers in the folds of her clothes. The unnatural appearance of navigators often becomes the topic of gossip among lowly servants and officers alike. It is unsurprising, then, that Cassia prefers the company of one who is used to how she looks. The events that took place on Urak 5 must have shaken you greatly. Are you well? One should not underestimate the navigators of House Orselio, Lord Captain. Like a shawl of pale smoke, a faint malaise hangs upon my shoulders, but it will not be the slightest hindrance to my duty to humanity, and my duty to you. Cassia's response is reserved and pointedly decorous, clearly intended to create a distance between you. I hope that you have had ample time to calm yourself and your powers. There are people on this ship who are far more impulsive and dangerous to others, and far less devoted to the God Emperor than a herald of the Navis Nobilite. <laughs> but I did not need your words to see the shades of umber unease that whirl around your subjects whenever I am near. Were I not acquainted with such a reaction, I could have found their behavior in your question just now insulting. <sighs> Lord Captain, would you kindly explain to me why you are pestering me with these questions? Inquiring about my mood and my needs, showing an interest in the books I am enjoying. You are behaving as if you possessed a shred of fellow feeling for one such as I. I beg your pardon, Lord Captain. That was no way for a navigator to conduct herself. I am beginning to think, Lady Cassia, that the feelings I have for you are far more complicated than common sympathy. Lord Captain? So many colorful sparks are flaring to life and dimming all around you. It is a veritable ocean of emotions. There are so many of them that I can barely see the pure white sincerity of your words. Please forgive me. I cannot even understand myself right now. Your words and attention have reminded me of life on the station, of Theobald and Felek. I do not understand. They were merely the keepers of Urak 5. So why do memories of those two make me feel a strange heaviness here? 
She places a hand on her breastplate. At the same time, I find myself overwhelmed with new excitement and anticipation. At last, I have set foot outside my familiar walls and into a world that I have only seen before in the pages of books. Your ship alone is a treasure trove of remarkable artifacts and curiosities. And just imagine the things that await beyond, but... My delight must seem childish to you, surely. In your heart, you must be finding all this quite amusing. I would not dare to make fun of a lady's feelings, especially not one who has captivated me since I first set eyes on her. <sighs> Words like that, Lord Captain, could easily be misconstrued. You should familiarize yourself with some of the works in your library to learn the appropriate manner of conversing with a lady. Struggling to maintain an expression of polite indifference, Cassia covers her burning face and swiftly exits the room. Hmm. I'll reserve opinion. I won't make a final opinion until we see more content, but I feel like this romance, at least, uh, it moves too quickly. Like, it's kind of weird that we're already at this moment. Like, it doesn't... I guess it doesn't necessarily feel unnatural in the moment, considering how sheltered Cassia is, right? And what she's just been through. But on the whole, when compares this to other romances that Alcat has done, it doesn't feel like this one is being given enough room to breathe. But, you know, on the other hand, Warhammer isn't really about romance anyway. So I guess I probably should just be thankful that Alcat still decided to add romances in because I know there are plenty of people like, Romance? Warhammer? The hell is going on here? <laughs> Whereas I always prefer to have romances in my RPG. So six in one hand, half a dozen in another. All right, let's make sure she doesn't have anything else to say after that exchange. Words cannot describe how boring the bridge is without our stimulating conversations. All right. I have... Well, she's got nothing to say, so now we'll go on our mission. I have to talk on my Cassia in case I want to go back and do some content based on that. Coronis expands as a little studied region beyond the edges of the Imperium. All right, where was I going? Uh, unidentified void ship. And interrupted again. Lord Captain, sorry to disturb you. Victus pauses as if listening to something. It's pandemonium outside the bridge gate. One of the officers seems to be demanding an audience with you in person. I think I hear Master Warsarian's voice. In any case, I wanted to warn you in advance. All right, what is this? I wonder how it determines when these little side quests are supposed to come up. I think I talked to him, right? He, yeah, he's one of the original people I talked with, so maybe, maybe it's triggered because I had that conversation with him. The everyday sounds of the bridge are disrupted by voices raised in anger. Abelard's voice, the loudest of all. This is not the conduct of an officer. These are the antics of a high-born brat out on a lark. Explain yourself, Lieutenant. The younger woman standing before Abelard strives with all her might not to quail under the onslaught of her superior's anger. She falters, but then she manages to look him in the eye and say, Hi. I apologize, sir, but I must speak to the Lord Captain. Very well, Lieutenant. You may address the Lord Captain, not least because I see you have already seen fit to disturb him. Your unauthorized appearance on the bridge and display of belligerence toward a higher-ranking officer will be logged on your personal file without delay. Lord Captain, Lieutenant Arvilla Vent requesting permission to speak. Vent falls silent, then adds rashly, 
on a matter of extreme importance and urgency. You may speak, but I want to hear a report, not a shouting match. Having two officers bickering in full view of the bridge is unacceptable. I, I am sorry, Lord Captain. I, I thought that drastic times called for drastic measures, Vent exclaims hotly. This matter cannot wait. Any moment now, um, an assault unit will be dispatched to the lower decks on orders to crush the worker strike by any means necessary. But I am convinced that this step is unwarranted and that the crisis itself was provoked by the actions of one of the senior officers. Vent is almost trembling with tension as she delivers her speech, her face extremely pale. Abelard, in no hurry to intervene, lets out a skeptical huff. Lord Captain, I urge you to investigate the actions of Seneschal Warsarian and to intervene in what's happening on the lower decks because very soon we will have a mutiny or a massacre on our hands. Vent reels off the lad's words as though she knows them by heart. She has clearly been preparing to say them for some time. When she is finished, she casts an anxious glance at Abelard, then at you. There's an insurrection in the making aboard my ship, and no one has informed me. I would not deem it a problem worthy of the rogue trader's attention. The lower decks, as it so happens, are in revolt. Thirty-something years ago, we even had a revolutionary leader rise up who dared to establish workers' rule across the entire ship. It took a month to restore order, but even eight years later, we were still battling rumors that the hero had survived his execution and was on the verge of gathering people to fight against tyranny once more. Abelard scoffs. Needless to say, the rumors were baseless. As for the current situation, we have sufficient enforcers to deal with it. But on this ship, the word of the Lord Captain carries more weight than a salvo from a hundred bolters. I'm sure that if the rogue trader addresses the malcontents directly, he will quell the unrest. I dread to think what problem you would disturb the rogue trader with next. Perhaps you ask the Lord Captain to break up brawls in the mess room. I have already given you the means to resolve this problem. You simply need to use them. If I may, your lordship, sending a hit squad to crush the rebellion is a means of ignoring the problem, not solving it. How did all this start? The situation could boil over at any minute, so I'll give you the condensed version. It all began when the enforcers found a cultist amulet on the body of someone who'd been killed in a drunken brawl. We reported it up the chain immediately, arranged for a cleansing rite to be performed, and opened an investigation. No heretics have been found alive, but the search has brought tensions between enforcers and workers to a head. Where does Seneschal Warsarian come into all of this? I should explain, Abelard intones grimly. I beg you to hurry, time is running out. I will not hurry, since my competence is under scrutiny, I shall speak for as long as I see fit. There is an established order to the way things are done on this ship, and one of the pillars of that system is that the rogue trader's attention is not distracted by trivial matters. It is the Seneschal's role to ensure that. I have always handled eternal problems myself, so, of course, when I received information about cultists hiding on the lower decks, I took the matter in hand. So long as I live, not one of the vermin who murdered Theodore Van Balancius will find refuge on her ship. You were too heavy-handed, Seneschal Warsaria. Arrest, interrogations, mass punishments for entire sectors. It has driven the people to the brink, Vint says bitterly. Now there is a strike on the lower decks, and Depot 4, to be precise. Three worker clans are involved, but many more are passively supporting them. The situation could degenerate into all-out insurrection. But when I reported my concerns, the only response I received was an order to dispatch an assault unit and crush the strike with maximum force. Abelard, what do you have to say to all this? I see no need to add anything. I acted with the remnant of my authority, guided exclusively by the best interests of your protectorate and your personal safety. If you wish to confirm the protectitude of my actions for yourself, I have no objections. For my part, 
I urge the Lord Captain to go down to the lower decks. Stop the assault unit and speak directly to the people. You will see that they are not lying or harboring heretics. That way, you will stop the uprising before it begins. What is Depot 4? Depot 4 is one of the poorest sectors on the lower decks. It is home to clans of general laborers. They are not as valuable to the ships as the families who have served as specialized sisters for generations. They are an easily replaceable resource, and one which is now, or besides, giving succor to cultists and minions of the arch enemy. Depot 4 is poor and troubled, but at worst, that means drunken fights and illegal rock gut brewing. We have handled the workers of Depot 4 in the past. We would have done so again if the crackdown on Depot 4 hadn't been so harsh. And another important part to bear in mind, the problem is not limited to this sector. It is located on one of the most populated lower decks and everything that happens there has a knock-on effect on all the neighboring sectors. I am certain that the Seneschal was acting within his authority, but I will still verify the soundness of the decisions for myself. Throne preserve you, Lord Captain. Thank you for your support. Abelard grits his teeth slightly. The Enterprise boarding on the soft board, but please yourself, Lord Captain. However, I categorically insist that I escort you. Hmm. Bringing my whole squad in case there's a fight. All right. Good old union busting. <laughs> Or not. What's the Imperium way to deal with this? Probably as callous as possible, right? <laughs> um, Lara Union issue. Seeing this. All right. Let's see what they have to say. Hey, it's Warsaria. Take that, scum. Look who it is. This is all his fault. All of it. Abelard reflexively wipes the sweat from his brow in a startling human gesture and a telling one, a rare moment where he allows his age and weariness to show through his armor-like veneer of self-assurance. The lower decks are a source of endless problems. Sometimes I dearly regret that we cannot replace all the locals with servitors. The people dare to disrespect a senior officer. They would not have the chance to express such disrespect if we were not here and if the situation had been dealt with by the relevant officers. Abelard grimaces. It is a junior officer's worst failing to pass problems up the chain of command. I have never been able to abide it. I shall say it again. It was a mistake to come here on Lieutenant Vince, Vince Wynn, Lord Captain. I must admit that the lieutenant is by no means the worst material for an officer, Abelard adds peevishly. But in the name of Terra, the girl is the same age as my eldest great-granddaughter, and she has the gall to tell me how to manage the lower decks and hunt down cultists. It will be another 20 years at least before she can be entrusted to act without oversight. Did you hear? They were shouting your name. Of course they were. The organization of the daily routine life of the ship rests upon my shoulders, the mountain of challenges and problems from which I endeavor to insulate you, Lord Captain. The situation on Lower Decks has been a cause for concern, and I have intervened personally on more than one occasion. That must be why they remember me. They do not know your face. To them, you are akin to a creature of legend, one who has stood on the steps of the Golden Throne, no less. Whereas I am the man whose name is attached to every order, docking rations, or lowering a bay's heating. Let's keep moving. We need to get to the bottom of this. All right, interesting. So they are heated. Something resembling a nest made out of thermal installation material. This must be where the workers sleep between shifts. Yeesh. Wow, Noble's from the upper deck here to see us. Right. Let's try what I found. A container can be seen beyond the massive bars. Perhaps examining the pipe will allow you to reach it. How do I examine the pipe? I'm confused. Love to see the Lord Dex. Oh, this master crafted patellar augment is not fit for a service. Massive bars. 
examining the pipe. Ah, uh, will allow you to reach it. I'm confused. That seems like something new. What? The world is full oh, wait, of colors. Is it to be I have never seen before. There? Let's see. Is there anything in here? G Greetings, Your Grace. Oh, nothing there. Nothing there. Inside the box, a string of scratched letters run along the edge. Different first names, but the same surname. It looks like this box has been passed down in the family from generation to generation. She might set. Excellent. Ramble. Nothing there. Carry the Emperor's will as your torch. So again, I'm confused. There's nothing. All right. Maybe we just have to come to. A back here towards the end. Marching off. Still do not see our person coming down here. That's all right. Your Lord Captain does. None of, oh, what's this? Huge pipes, the arteries of the ship, run through many bays, delivering air, water, heat, and the propulsive force of steam. That's so, all there. I'll guide your vessel and lead you on your way. Ah, Cassie, I can't I can't wait to allow you to unload on some of my enemies. The sounds of a heated discussion reverberate throughout the ship's bays. Lieutenant Arvilla Vent of the ship's enforcers is barring the path of a heavily built assault unit officer, and judging by their expressions and tone, the standoff has dragged on for some time already and has now reached boiling point. I have my orders to put an end to the unrest and purge this sector. You can take your orders and shove them. This is my deck and my sector. These are there are only three people who can waltz in here without my express permission. The first officer, the rogue trader, and the emperor himself. So, now all my lessons fall on deaf fears. Abelard mutters in crabby approval. He does not clarify whether he means Lieutenant Vent, the officer looming over her, or both. Your lordship, noticing you, the two junior officers snap to attention and salute, the subordinates following suit a moment later. What's the situation? Your lordship, my people have locked down the bay where the strikers are, including their leaders. We have the situation under control as far as resources allow. We encountered some locals on our way here. Their conduct was outrageous. They even tried to throw things at us. Then pay us slightly. The people are getting desperate, clearly. They saw the assault unit and they decided they had nothing left to lose. I mean, I apologize, Lord Captain. It is outrageous. I'm sure the people simply didn't recognize you. It wouldn't have occurred otherwise. We will deal with them once the current situation is resolved. Is that all you have to say? Are you sure you're worthy of an officer's rank, Lieutenant Vent? Vent pales slightly, but straightens up and clips out. Forgive me, Lord Captain. I will take steps to ensure such a thing does not happen again. I want to speak to the strikers. Abelard's mouth twists, but he restrains himself and says nothing. Right you are, Lord Captain. Allow me to wish you good luck. Hope gleams in Lieutenant Vent's eyes. So, usually, of course, this is the type of thing that would be struck down, but Lord High Slander, completely new to his role, wants things to go to go well, wants people working together, so he's going to take his time to do this. Onward. He doesn't feel well established enough to take the, the iron hand approach without being at risk of losing the ship. A dozen pairs of eyes stare apprehensively at you. 
The people before you are typical inhabitants of the lower decks. You take in their simple clothing, crude weapons, and faces that display varying levels of mutation, from the barely discernible, to the strange, to the outright grotesque. Our children are freezing, we've done nothing wrong, and we're being punished. We won't stand for it anymore. A whisper passes through the crowd, and you detect a mixture of fear, astonishment, and joy in their reactions. Finally, three people break away from the crowd, an elderly woman and two men. They must be the leaders. They bow clumsily before you. L Lord Captain, you have come down to us. We were attacked on the way here. How do you explain that? Here's an explanation for you. The people have been pushed to their limit and now they're lashing out. As if we don't know why these top deck units are being sent down here. Like that one there here, like that one there that the lieutenant won't let pass. Our clans are all inside the bay that's been sealed off. But the lower decks are big. I'm sure there are some people who've had just about enough. We're getting it from all sides. The soldiers have encircled the ones who've risen up. A death squad has just arrived. It's no wonder folks are lashing out. Their words seem sincere to you. Their body language and the glances traded between them reveal that the news of the attack has shocked them. Tell me, what is troubling you? Why are you striking? Striking? That's news to us, your, your lordship, says a tall, thin man in worker's garb. All we're doing is asking questions, saying what we think. Shut up, Rivet, snaps the old woman, who turns her hostile dark eyes on you. Here's the deal, your lordship. Your damned enforcers are all over us down here. They say they're looking for cultists. One wrong word and they're re reaching for their batons. If they want to punish someone, they turn off the heating to whole bays for a week at a time so we get sick and freeze. In my clan, two little ones died from inflammation in their lungs, all because of those enforcers. The old woman spits on the floor and rubs at the spittle with the toe of her worn-out shoe. Argenta does not interrupt the workers, but you see the sadness well in her eyes when the children's deaths are mentioned. She quietly whispers a requiem prayer and makes a sign over herself. It's all true. Vent is the only enforcer officer who stood up for us. It's clear as day who had a mother from the lower decks and who grew up amid ships and has no fellow feeling towards us. The grim man with a scarred face throws up his arms. Your lordship, we're no villains here. We're honest workers, your servants. We've plotted no disorder. We went on strike openly, and now we've got guns pointed at us. All we're doing is asking to be allowed to work in peace without being harassed. The persecution started apropos of nothing, you say. I was told that one of you was found in possession of a cultist amulet, and that there are heretics hiding here. A cultist amulet? What's that? The gigaw they found on the dead drunkard? If it was something evil or forbidden, we sure didn't know. The enforcers just said they were looking for heretics among us, and anyone obstructing their investigation would be punished. But how could there be heretics here? We know our own people. There have been no new faces around. Definitely not. And if there were, we'd be the first to report them. As for this amulet, or whatever it is, they took it off a dead body. There are no cultists still breathing in our sector, that's for sure. But when the fight broke out, some enterprising folks looted the bodies. The boots they came back with. Nobody's ever tread these decks and boots so fine. I can tell you that. Seems to me these cultists have better commanders than us. Oh yeah, those boots really were fine, and there was no harm in taking them, right? And as for the amulet, it must have been pocketed by someone who didn't know any better. We don't need any amulets around here. We all worship the Emperor, and when we're working, we bow down before the machine spirits of the large and small transformers and the servo motor, the same way my grandfather was taught a hundred years ago by a tech priest who came calling. Believe us, your lordship, we are people of faith. Naive children! Weren't you taught from an early age about the dangers of the arch enemy's creations? Weren't you warned that any unfamiliar object could be one of them? We were told, holy sister, but it was long ago. The last time we saw a confessor in our sector, it was just after I'd had my third little one. That is regrettable. 
You cannot lay the burden of leading a righteous life on the shoulders of the Holy Fathers. Who will you blame when beasts crawl out of those amulets you stole from the heretics? The Holy Father who was not there, or the scavenger who brought evil down on himself and his neighbors? Ooh, look, look at her laying down the holy doctrine. Abelard, do you have anything to add? I authorize the use of all necessary measures to locate chaos worshippers hiding in this sector. The specific steps taken by the officers were not reported to me. Abelard frowns, clearly disgruntled at having to explain himself in the workers' presence. Nevertheless, I am certain that their actions were justified. Cultists are no drunken stevedores. They are the enemy and a threat to the ship. Neutralizing them demands decisive action. What changes do you want? Would you look at this? The exalted Lord Captain himself is asking us bilge rats what we want. Well, here's what. We want you to rein in your damned enforcers, to quit turning off the heat, and to stop battering everything that moves. No, that's not it. We want the enforcers gone from here, and we want to be armed. Give us arms, and we'll govern ourselves. We'll defend ourselves if these cultists do show their faces. I've been leader of my clan for 20 years now. Getting rid of these club-wielding thugs can only improve things around here. You've gone too far, old man. They'll never let the maggots on the lower decks live without the enforcers breathing down their necks. They probably even insist on enforcers on the upper decks too. As for weapons, what do we need them for? Before the first day's out, we'll have someone shooting their neighbor out of stupidity or drunkenness. We don't need that. If the enforcers start stop hassling us, that'll be enough. In return, we'll find the scavengers who robbed the cultists' bodies, and we'll talk to them, one lower decker to another. If there are any more of those damned amulets about, we'll hand them over to the enforcers ourselves. You speak for yourself and your clan, and I'll speak for me and mine. I don't want empty gestures. I want real change. They'll promise us the world now, but as soon as the anointed one turns his back, these brutes will be on us even harder than before, all because we dared to speak out. The tall worker's eyes dart between the two arguing leaders. Every few seconds, he opens his mouth as if he's planning to agree, but each time he falls silent, simply making a few vague noises of approval. Thoughts, Abelard? The story about scavenging for boots and accidentally picking up a heretical amulet doesn't convince me. These people were moments away from rebelling and, possibly, becoming minions of the arch enemy. We must not give them what they want. Even if they did acquire something innocently, purely out of their own stupidity, that does not mean they are not tainted with corruption. What begins as petty th thievery to turn into a far graver problem. I have seen it before. Abelard's face darkens momentarily. In my second war, there was a sergeant in the Imperial Guard Regiment that was stationed nearby. The sergeant took an ordinary pocket knife from the body of a heretic, and his whole unit lost their lives for it. When they finally managed to break into the barracks, they found not a single survivor, only the pocket knife, which had grown through all the rows of beds like a metal choking vine. So when it comes to scavengers, malcontents, strikers, or whatever they'll turn into next, my verdict is simple. Give them no quarter. Coercion. Spreading anarchy on the ship is the first step towards embracing chaos. Putting weapons into untrained hands would be even worse. What's more, the enforcers are needed to maintain oversight and order. Withdraw those demands, and we will consider the rest. The tall worker they call Rivette shrugs and casts a sidelong look at the old woman. Old Nan, listen, listen. The Lord Captain himself has come down to us and is offering concessions. I don't know a single person in the whole of Depot 4 who's ever stood next to the road trader, let alone talk to them. Back down. Now's no time for you to be a stubborn old crone. Listen to us, old Nan. The three clans of Depot 4 ought to act as one. We've made our minds up. It's your turn to decide. Don't ask them to disband the enforcers or give us weapons. We don't need any of that. The old woman hisses in dissatisfaction. You two are ganging up on me, is that it? So brave you are against an old woman. But I'll shut up. I will indeed. 
I won't go against two clan leaders on my own. If you want to make peace with the enforcers, make your peace. That's great. Just fantastic. Lord Captain, we're all agreed. Then it's decided. The persecution will stop, and I will expect you to assist in locating any remaining amulets or weapons left by the cultist. Your Lordship, thank you. You have not abandoned us, Lord Deckers. You came yourself and settled everything. How tell my grandchildren about this? Of course, your Lordship. We'll root out any nasty business faster than the enforcers, and we'll leave no stone unturned. This is complete bedlam. Are you satisfied, Lord Captain? Then... May I suggest we leave this circus and discuss everything in route? Uh-oh. Sounds like he's not particularly happy. I go where the whispers lead. I don't understand what we're supposed to- This ocular implant was a worthwhile investment. Manometer. The gauge shows that the steam pressure in this pipe is close to the maximum. However, it does not reach the bars at the other end. Okay, maybe that's the one I was supposed to turn. This page is where the start of each shift is marked. The last mark is missing. The work How is written on strike. Find the right way without his light? The heat sink warms the air around it to a scorching temperature. This is the warmest part of the bay. The workers have ever dragged deck chairs here. Let's proceed. Awesome. All right, let's see if we can get to the packets now. What deeds await us? Container can be seen beyond the massive bars. Perhaps examining the pipe will allow you to reach it. I can't right click on it. It goes underneath. I am so confused. I don't know what to do about this pipe. Oh, what the hell? Was this always here? Nothing is happening. Perhaps turning a different valve will work. Okay. Huh. All right, so there's one valve there. Uh, a nice little stroll. Is there any other valve over here? No. Because I can't talk to him and get him to move. Nope. Okay. Something ominous lurks ahead. Oh, there's a valve down there. Thing is happening perhaps a different valve light of terror i don't remember Guide either one of those way. valves popping up before that's interesting Lord captain no problem no valve there no so wait will this valve Say no more what does it say now also, May, you gotta hit that vial before other vials are available. Interesting. Oh, here we go. Did I hit that one? Not nothing on there either. If such is the Emperor's will. What in the hell? Oh, whatever this package is, is freaking worth it. This master crafted patellar augment is not fit for a servitor. Go? No, no. No. Doom. Doom, doom, doom. All down here. Blessed be the road that we take. Because there's none over here, right? No. There's none of the big ones over there. So, what about now? 
No. And that one still won't open, you know, I hear. It is my destiny sure. to traverse the unknown. Can't open that one either. Did I hit this already? Oh, 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 here we go, here we go. Progress. And I already saw that one, okay. So this one worked. But not enough to open this up yet. Interesting. I'll warn you if I hear one, anything. Two, back over here. Oh wait, that's the one. It um, it wouldn't open up. This one I can hit. No, won't open up that one the either. The sooner we start. Where is the? Oh wait, it was down here. It's the other one I have found. No, nope, that gun the doesn't Empress work either. Will as your torch. Oh, wasn't there, wasn't there one in here? I hate these kind of puzzles because I have a horrible memory. <laughs> uh, no, there wasn't one Marching of that type. On. And this one I have, oh, wait, 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 there's one right here. Right, okay, nope, that won't, won't do anything. That one doesn't do anything. Let me check this one that was over I'll here again. I'll charge a course for you. No, won't uh, won't let me do anything with that either. Interesting. Cause I just heard that one spin, right? So one, two, three. I dare not. Where is the one that I'm missing? only this one in the back right there was no other one there oh my god annoying me all right I've never wondered so much before. that one back there doesn't work there's none over here mm -hmm. wait a minute actually now that I think about it that's all of them right because it's oh whoa 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 colors I have never seen before. There we go. Okay. Here's another. That one won't change. Okay. That should do nothing. happening okay and that one I can't even hit again okay cool what about this one now is it the time to hit this one nope I that one still won't work that one back on over there way. still doesn't work what about this one how come on man good lord want to make sure I'm not causing any of these to come back, right? All right, no. So that one's How still can done. How one find the right way without his light? Mm, and let's make sure. Nope, don't don't need to hit this one either. Excellent. Light of I'm not terror. done. Guide Did I hit you already? Nothing is happening. Okay, cool. And I'm pretty sure I already did you. Let me make sure nothing's happening. Even though it's doing that squeaky noise, nothing's happening. What about you? There we go. Okay, so you're ready for a turn. Now let's try it here. Nothing happening. There we go. Good Lord. And I got to level up after that. I, I, I deserved it. <laughs> I absolutely deserve that level up. Good lord. 
This better be work. Oh, it's got oh, it's got grenades, and in fact, wait, five damage. Oh, this is the one that pushes them down. That that pushes the targets two cells away. If the target fails a toughness test, it falls prone. Right, and then the crack grenades are one of the highest damage ones, so that's cool. And then melter charges add some multi cues. All right, not a bad haul, not a bad haul. Sheesh, I. Don't think that puzzle was in the beta. It could be, but I don't remember it. Stopping unexpectedly, Abelard imperiously dismisses the unit to stand at a distance and addresses your other companion, saying, I have an urgent matter to discuss with the Lord Captain. Please give us a moment. Abelard looks at you, and his last vestiges of a strength vanish. Well, are you pleased with your investigation, Lord Captain? You kowtowed to the disloyal rabble. You believed their lives and showed them leniency. Next time the ship's attacked by cultists, that rabble will welcome them in with open arms and allow them to wreak havoc or they whatever havoc they like because they see you as a weak leader. Is that how you see your future at the helm of the Von Valencia's Protectorate? Hmm. He's not going to pick the first one because he already knows Abelard feels empowered to talk to him in that tone. And telling him directly, don't talk to me like that, isn't going to do anything. So he's got to cut to the heart of the problem. He's not going to ask him why he's so angry because that's just going to give him an opportunity to, to whine and, and, and say why he feels like he's in the right. And he's certainly not going to say this truth is considered criticism. So instead he'll say, let's talk about your role in all this instead. You allow this revolt to happen. Your actions practically guaranteed it would. I would have handled the situation myself had you not decided to intervene, Abelard says irris irascibly. Remember, Lord Captain Theodore, do you think she ever set one slippered foot on the lower decks? No, she did not. Such matters were left to myself and the junior officers while she dedicated herself to her grand designs for the Protectorate, as any true strategist and war rogue traitor ought. Maybe if Theodore had spent more time on trifling matters, she wouldn't have wound up dead. There is a new Lord Captain aboard this ship now, and I will not repeat her mistake. Abelard looks at you stunned and exhales loudly. Then he nods curtly. I commend your decisiveness, but I am uncomfortable with introducing new protocols in the midst of a crisis. And Abelard stands straight at attention. I lost my temper, Lord Captain, and I believe I ought to explain myself. Abelard speaks slowly, the words not coming easily to him. The prosperity of the Von Valencia's protectorate is not just an empty phrase to me. I left the Imperial Navy for the chance to see it flourish. It was the most momentous decision of my life. I did it because I saw in Lord Captain Theodore's deeds the sign of true greatness. Rogue traders do not simply forge new routes to capture worlds. They create order out of anarchy. That creative impulse was entirely lacking during my time in the military. So I left behind everything I had known, everything my family had known. I come from a long line of officers, and I embarked upon this incredibly reckless venture. Lord Captain Theodore entrusted me with all the concerns she had no time for. She would go off on our flagship for long periods, to distant frontiers, on scouting voyages, and the advancement of the Protectorate rested on my shoulders. And then suddenly, everything that had been built over years and years began to quake, rattling like a flimsy hanger on a seismically active world. One of the senior officers betrayed us all. The rogue traitor was killed, and who knows what is happening on the planets. I tell you this honestly, without fear of appearing weak. All this has come as a grievous blow to me. I am not panicking or grieving because I cannot allow myself to panic or grieve. I am duty-bound to aid the new rogue traitor, to aid you, to find your footing as quickly as possible. And to do that, I must insulate you from problems that in the past have been dealt with by tried and tested procedures set out in the ship's regulations. Procedures that were established long ago and then functioned smoothly for decades cannot suddenly be deemed excess to requirements. I understand. You need to learn how to respect me as your Lord Captain 
and Rogue Trader, accept it and start living in the new world, a world where Theodore is gone and where you and I have new decisions to make. Abelard nods, solemnly inclines his head. Yes, Lord Captain. After a moment's silence, he adds, looking at you with interest. Your resolve is admirable and demonstrates strong leadership. I shall remember this moment, should my old habits ever begin to creep back in. And now, please, let us leave the lower decks. If the rogue trader desires to stretch his legs, there are far more suitable places. Awesome. All right. Puzzle completed. Quest done. Level up received. Let's find out if they'll finally let us land on a planet. Or if somebody else has something that they want to interrupt us with. Actually, let's talk to Abelard again just to make sure he has no new dialogue options we should be aware of. Safe for yourself, Lord Captain. All right, nope. All right, let's see if uh, they'll let us move forward. And judges, judges, we're moving, we're moving. No, didn't quite get there. Oh, or maybe so. The Vox, oh, yeah, this is it. The Vox crackles to life, and Master Helmsman Ravor addresses you. What we have here, Lord Captain. It is not very noticeable, but there's a void ship sitting in the local asteroid field. It sure is quiet, like it's huddled up in there on purpose. It's not like I'm surprised. The thing is more scrap heap than ship at this point. Somebody sure went to town on it. We are registering critical damage to the hull and depressurization of several compartments. Oh, there's an incoming transmission now, too. Hear us. The box transmission hisses and abruptly cuts the static. Do not require assistance. Pete, do not require assistance. Copy. The box relays a different voice. Keep following. They'll pass us by, won't they? Emperor protects. Lord Captain, I, I was told our Argus cannot determine the allegiance of the vessel. To be brief, there's an unidentified and badly damaged vessel within an asteroid field near the Rakaida Phila colony that is refusing help, which, not to put too fine a point on it, has not yet been offered to them. Revor, can we establish communication? Let the vessel identify itself. Yes, Lord Captain. The connection is established. Unknown vessel, we are receiving you. Identify yourselves. I repeat, identify yourselves. For a brief moment, the box only hisses and snaps, and then several voices at once start shouting over one another. Do not tell them. Tell them! We are done for! This is Thunderfang. We are... One of the voices falters uncertainly and is replaced by another. A merchant vessel. Do you copy? We are a private chit vessel. A merchant vessel. Of course they are. Damn my stupid head. Where did I hear this name before? Thunderfang. Revor. Damage report on the unknown vessel. Telemetry shows multiple hull breaches, most likely caused by the guns of a combat ship. Several compartments are leaking air. The bridge has been almost completely obliterated. Two of the engines are critically damaged. Somebody gave them a thrashing so solid they barely managed to limp away. Thunderfang, why can we not identify you? You can make out hoarse and furious whispering even over the crackling of the static. Why? I don't know. What if? Certainly not. The whispering dies and a clear, youthful voice cuts through the static. Our vessel is badly damaged. Amage is preventing the correct ident ident identification. We assure you, Eastful Merchant Vessel, Thunderfang does not require aid. Thunderfang, your vessel is badly damaged. What happened to you? The Vox responds by bursting into a cacophony of sounds, words, and emotions. Someone chuckles bitterly, another swears with some foul expletives, and yet another hisses furiously, demanding that the others shut up. You manage to make out little from all this noise. We were just flying, minding our own business, straight out of the blue and open fire. Miracle we could get away, Emperor protected, and then more fire. Who? Void only knows. Roasted our tail, bombed everything. The folks, our folks are left without our help. We never got to them. 
Thunderfang, now stop playing games and explain again what you forgot in the area. And this time, I highly recommend the truth. Happy now? What have you done, idiot? It is too late now. The Vox channel is again filled with the angry whispering of several voices. The whispers and static are drowned out by a clear and slightly frightened voice. Do you copy? We are from the fellow of the void. We did not come here to loot on a different business to help our own out of jail. Do not hurt, please. We already had our chronos cleaned. How about striking a deal? Our hold is full of lunder. I mean goods. In case you are unaware, Lord Captain, the Fellowship of the Void is a disorderly assembly of several dozen pirate factions in the Coronas Expanse. They consider themselves above regular heretics solely because they sometimes have box conversations with those whom they are about to board. Word up to me, I would make them eat a salvo from the macro cannons to shake the scum loose from the decks. They certainly deserve it. The honeyed voice of the High Factotum interrupts the translation with a polite cough. Uh, I would wait on destroying the vessel if I were you. Although the moral aspects of their livelihood do cause some awkward questions, the Fellowship of the Void remains a major supply of goods to the local market. Perhaps you'll find dealing with them acceptable, especially when jumping to the warp is impossible. Thunderfang. Prepare for commercial exchange. All right, so let's see. We can take a flamer. The rares range attacks decrease the target's dodge by 5%. This does not stack. Excellent. And we'll take all of those too. Huh, what else? Reaper K. Ooh, that's right. I want this. I want this. I want this. I want this. Until I can get something better, I want that. Yeah, take it, 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 take it. Trade, how much did that get? 1,200? Not even one. Oof. It's going to take a while to get you where I want you, huh? All right, so now we're at one, and that's all we can trade. Oh, well. We'll take the force grenades, take the med kits. What is this? Noise suppression. They gain plus one resolve. Interesting. We'll take the power maul. And auto gun. Even though we'll probably end up just trading that back in, but still, we'll take it. And that's it. That's all we can do for now. All right. Um, Lord High Slander doesn't see it as worth his time to bomb them, and they're very useful to keep around, especially in this desperate situation that he's in right now. He's not going to go crazy imperialist on them just yet. When he's in a, a position of greater power and authority. That's when he'll be able to start really exerting his influence. All right. Let's see what's going on. Rykad. Mm -hmm. Whoa. This is not the planet. As the ship makes its way through the star system, a strange fatigue falls over you. Your eyelids grow heavy, and the quill you have been using to draw up yet another order falls from your hand. You raise your head with a start. Someone else is here in your study. You stand up and stare at the dozens upon dozens of corpses surrounding you. Among their number, you recognize the disfigured and bloodied faces of those who died on the ship's bridge and those you met in your previous life. How is that possible? Where are the enforcers posted to stand guard? It matters not. You are alone against a horde of heretics risen from the darkness to take your life. As, of, as if of its own accord, the shard lying on the edge of the desk, the sole remnant of Conrad Volkvir's weapon, slips into your hand. The metal is searing cold. The dead sway from side to side, closing in around you in a nightmarishly slow advance. Step back, step back, or else. The dead only draw closer and closer, and your fingers involuntarily tighten around the shard, its sharp edge cutting into your palm. 
An unbearably bright light floods everything around, and you found yourself surrounded by groveling minions, their bodies shivering in your mere presence. Your hands no longer hold a pitiful shard, but a majestic and intricate weapon, a skillfully crafted sword with strange, unnerving proportions, a curved design, and an unusual hilt adorned with the image of a closed eye. The eye opens wide, revealing a gaze so ancient and dark that it steals your breath away. You have felt this gaze before, there, on the bridge, and the voice that appears in your mind only confirms your guest. The tapestry is woven, the path is chosen. Accept your fate, champion. Throw the daemon blade away. Never. Your body refuses to obey your mind. The handle feels as if it has become one with your hands, and the gaze of the demonic eye sets your very soul ablaze. Resisting your fate is futile. You scream as you feel your soul burn away to ash. You awaken from the vision, kneeling next to your desk, clothes drenched in sweat and with a sour taste on your tongue. Your head is ringing, and you struggle to recall those faces and the image of the sword in your hands. Only the deep cut on your palm and the bloodied shard lying on the floor remind you of what just transpired. You would rather die than touch that thing again, so you reach a shaking hand for your vox and call for a servitor. Now you just have to wait for the mindless automaton to arrive, pick up the cursed artifact, and head for the nearest airlock to be claimed by the void. Woo. Rough. I wonder how that goes as a heretic. Definitely, definitely looking forward to finding that out. Okay. Will it finally let us land on this planet? Let's find out. And yes, looks like it will. And we got all our people, all our people ready for a level up. Fantastic. Oh yeah, they definitely added new loading screens. I've never seen that before. That's super cool. Oh, it's gonna be so awesome seeing what are all the new things added into the game now. Uh oh. Woo. You can tell by the wings it's taking quite a bit of blaster fire. The starport greets you with the din of ordnance and the smell of explosives tickles your nostrils. It is difficult to tell through the smoke who is firing and whom. Halt! Weapons on the ground or I'm firing! A man in a torn and dirty uniform hobbles towards you from behind the chunks of rockcrete and crumpled steel. His cracked helmet is adorned with a crooked label that reads Sergeant Malgar. All right, so our skies are in lockdown. The rebels are shooting down anything that flies, and you lot just happened to land in our rear without a scratch to show for it. And on a shuttle like that, where did you get it? Stolen from the palace, isn't it? He is visibly awed by the resplendent gold of your transport. Grab him, lads. We've got ourselves a rebel landing force. Abelard turns purple. By the holy throne, what is this mess? Adira glances around. They're in a rough spot, old man. Go easy on them. Abelard, enlighten this rabble about the proper manner of greeting the God Emperor's chosen. Actually, no, you know what? He's more uh, direct. I am the rogue trader Von Valancius. Give me a status report this instant. With a mixture of awe and terror, he snaps to attention, raises his freshly cut chin like an exemplary soldier, and barks. Oh, my mistake, sir. At once, the starport is under the control of the governor's wardens. Per perimeter commander is Sergeant... 
A frag grenade explosion cuts off the rest of the sergeant's words. Shrapnel flies everywhere with a piercing screech. One of the soldiers falls to the ground, clutching the remains of his forearm that is now adorned with crimson tatters. Blood is pouring out of the stump, and the soldier's agony is short-lived. The sergeant curses and hastily says an army prayer for the dead. With a rasping cough, the sergeant turns back to you. <coughs> Pardon me, sir. Uh, sergeant Les Malgar reporting. My unit is holding the starport on the governor's orders. How may I serve? Some dirty dog nearly shot down my shuttle. Affirmative, your lordship, sir. It's all those damn rebels. Those maggots somehow got their hands on an anti-aircraft battery, and it's causing our shuttles no end of trouble. That thing really packs a punch. You're lucky they missed you. I've seen them fry two shuttles carrying reinforcements. Not a soul survived. Do you happen to know if a member of the Inquisition has come here? At the word Inquisition, the, soldier, the sergeant's face fills with awe. I don't know, sir. There definitely haven't been any visitors like that on my watch. You might have to inquire at the headquarters, your lordship, sir. What's going on here? Unrest, sir. Armed rebellions in both the capital and the provinces. First the lower level sparked, then it went up the spires. They hit the box hubs, the arsenals, the mag train stations. Then Felek tore off his mask, precisely because he knew about the trouble on Rykab Menorahs. He knew that none of our allies would come to our aid. Cassia lets out a sorrowful sigh. You may continue your report, peasant. My unit was here when it all went to the Groxes. The tech priests linked to satellite reporting sightings of strange void ships in the system. They were orbiting the star until one of them set course for landing on right cab majors. The governor took precautionary measures in order to increase security at the key facilities. Everyone knows that whenever something is not right, you better double the warden details. The alarm was raised and we were sent to secure the starport. It's the only reason we were able to hold it. They're crushing us, the scumbags. It's been a whole turn since the last reinforcements came in. We're running low on ammo. Every other fighter is wounded. I don't know how bad it is in the streets, but they'll drive us out of here in any minute. Who are you, anyway? Sergeant Lance Malgar, sir. 11th generation loyal soldier of House Wind uh, winter scale awarded three commendations for faultless service ever since the olden days his lordship the rogue trader has recruited soldiers and shipwrights on right cab menorahs so there's no greater honor for a rikadian than serving his lordship with diligence pat him on the shoulder you're doing fine work malgar and so are your troops it is people like you that hold the imperium together i live to serve the sergeant's grim voice rings with a martyr's pride I am going to see the governor. If I may report, sir, as long as the rebels keep shooting their damned anti-aircraft battery, there's absolutely no way to shuttle you to the governor. I would have to be on foot, and the streets are dangerous. I have no one to send with you as an escort. I assigned all available troops to accompany the esteemed tech priest to the governor. I will vox cast orders to them to wait for you, and I'll inform headquarters. They better send out a convoy to meet you halfway. Meanwhile, we will follow the governor's orders and hold the line here. Adira frowns as her gaze grows distant, as if she is looking through the sergeant. You're a good soldier, but you've got a lot of blood on your hands, both yours and others. You know the same hand that salutes now might falter in darkness. Rank and epaulets won't save you from the bitterness. Pardon me, my lady, but I can't get my head around these fancy words you're saying. I've seen plenty of blood, but trust me, I'll fight to my last drop. You're a good soldier, Malgar. I'll see that your heroism is noted. The sergeant blushes slightly. I live to serve. Another explosion interrupts the sergeant's words. With a sigh of relief, he turns to his soldiers and spits out a booming series of commands. Interesting. It, um... There were a couple of times when there were questions that I did intend to ask, but... It, uh... The, the selection that I... That I chose skipped over them. Gotta keep that in mind. Onward! The Grand Viaduct for receiving esteemed guests is buried in rubble. A nice little stroll. All right, let's do a save here and 
What's the next level up? Oh, yeah. Move, move, move. I'll definitely take that. And... I don't remember what I'm supposed to do. You kill it. Servant kills the target. That's... You, you are next. You go on. You protect me. Hold on. I'm sorry. I need to consult my build. Boom, boom, boom. Ready to serve. Um, oh, yeah. They get half my fellowship bonus for resolve. Yep. That's awesome. Complete that. I don't have a bill for you, so I'm just going to have to roll with it. Um, oh, yeah, he definitely needs Combat Master, so we can just give him that. You, what do you need? Uh, oh, you get another... You get another ability. For boating, increase an area that lasts. Ah, uh, more dodge, pre-science. Perception, fellowship, and willpower. Hmm... Interesting. That's a option as well. What are the options up here? Oh yeah, it's all about perfect spot. Yeah, no. Tactical knowledge is interesting, but no. I'm gonna go here. Sensory deprivation. And suffer to all characteristics. Hmm. Kind of like that sensory deprivation or dominate. They will spend all their movement points to move as close as possible toward the Psyker. They can act as normal, but all their MP is spent on on moving. Target must make the willpower resistance test again, otherwise they remain under this effect. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, and this is one creature within a 24 cell range. You know what? Yeah, I like that. It's going to be helpful. Uh, Not tech use, not logic. We'll take lore warp for you for now, I suppose. Now you, what did I get for you? Rapid reload. Ah, I shouldn't have got that, but it's okay. Could have waited on that a little bit. Agility. Oh, yeah. Bolt weapon expert. Definitely pick that up. And there we go. And then you. What's up with you? Ha! Ah, let's see. Um... Oh, that's right. Wait, so wait. I don't have point of curiosity. Oh. Oh, they, they don't give her notch of purpose automatically anymore. Oh, that's interesting. So you've got to wait a longer period of time before you could get um, that ability. Well, then, yeah, I'll definitely pick this. Let me check this. Definitely pick this. Ooh, yeah, that throws off the build I was going to use for her. Yeesh. That's actually kind of rough. All right, well, it is what it is. Yep, take notch of purpose. It is what it is. Do that. And last time, you know what? I might as well go ahead and get the one. Stable routes, perilous ways. And it is moved by the navigator's ability. Suffer willpower damage at the end of the movement. Yep, go ahead and get that. And that's all she wrote for now. Okay, fine. Um, the future is never certain. I see a fight out there. Let's go ahead and do another full save. Showing up uninvited. Oh, wow. How improper. Cross them. Hmm. So she's going to be able to do something very quickly. Hmm. That's as far as he can get, though. Let's put her here. Let's put you here. Let's put you. That's out the way. Cassia. Kind of want her close too, but um, it's not gonna work. I guess I'll put you here. And you. Oh, okay, cool. You can go here. Yeah, sure. I think that works. Let's do it. Oh, that's right. I get to go first. I get to go first. So, yeah. Let's... Oh, man. I hope uh, I hope you got a good angle. Um, 
as you. Oh, oh, they, she does. She is able to hit too. Excellent. All right. Got enough. That's and that's all the uh, action points she has. Uh oh, rebel agitator. Okay. Ooh. That just all felt very unfortunate. I know what it's to come. Indeed. Oh, that's it. Eleven. Eight through eighteen, so it's possible. In fact, you know what? I could. Does this keep me from being able to attack? No. Okay, cool. So yeah. Why don't you come closer? What? Was that you? Or? Oh, but it doesn't activate until his next turn, right? Ah, oh, that's fine though. Still. Let's see. We'll give you this. On it. And then, oh, 16, 11 to 25, we'll so possibility. Ah, we'll take it. Whoa. All right, Magenta. So there's a whole lot over here, and then there's this one guy over here. Interesting. And we're not particularly close to a, um, let's see, and most of the, what is, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> That's Lance. What is he holding? That's a bug. All right. Uh, let's see. Can, oh, she can I get to a bunch from cover, though. Okay, cool. I thought, she, I thought she was going to have to go uh, out of her way. Um, let's go ahead and get you As out. As the Emperor commands, I act. Come on. I'll do it. As the Emperor oh, commands, she only, I act. She only has got 37% on him now. Uh, might as well hold on this one. Oh, oh, there's that die, die. Good lord. Taking out your own people, apparently. Um, she'll put Is this square right in front of him. Oh, he resisted? Oh, well. Me. Oh, that's if right. I forgot insist, to designate one as my, um... Serve it. Oh, wow. She should be able to... She can't reach you? She can... And she can't reach him either? How whack is that? No! Oh, that's so annoying. Oh, wait, wait. Here, can... No? Oh. Anything else? That was we whack. Should have I should have gave the extra turn to Cassia. That's what I should have done. Wasn't even thinking. All right, Cassia. Take that. Take that extra boost too. There you go. Now you take this boost. Excellent. Now make me proud. Thirty-eight percent. Fifty-three percent. I'll take it. There we go. Probably about as good as it's gonna get. And let's see. Let's have put out a little bit. Ooh, 95%. And there we go. Look at that. I'm already making things happen. All right, Abelard. Uh, he'll come over here. Tried and tested tactics are the best ones. Go. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Ooh, look at that. We'll rule the stars themselves. Um, here. My place is at the fall. It will be done. I took care of this one. Excellent. 
Look at that, look at that. Just, just such a problem solver. I appreciate Follow that about you, lead. sir. At your back just solving problems left and right. Oh, look at that. And our little guard's been helping us as well. That's not going to help you, sir. All right. And we've got three people. So there's one, two. Where, oh, oh, there's that guy all the way back there. Okay, cool. Uh, she'll come here. Can she take you out in one go? She can't. You already got eight stacks, so we'll was, do this. Was that you? Or... And then we'll get... Go ahead and give some of this. Oh, snap! Whoa, that was interesting. I don't really understand what happened right there, but I'll I'll take it, whatever. Anything else? Add this. Icelander could take care of that, or actually, yeah, Kasia could take care of it. Guided by Let's faith. go ahead and get an angle where she can get both of them. I'll do it. Ninety-five percent. Oh, that's right. My uh. As the emperor commands, I act. Just a minor setback. Ooh. All right, you. Um, first and foremost, okay, yeah. You. No, you don't need a buff. You don't need a buff. You do. Makes the most sense. Probably makes the most sense to help you. Because you're the one you try to deal with. Nope, you can't even reach. Zero AP. Yeah, uh, let's see if you can reach if you go a little that bit further. Does that help? It does. Only 42 percent still. Ah, uh, it's all good. You should get enough momentum to. Oh, but did you already do that? No, you didn't already do that. So here. Uh, yeah, we'll give it to her. And there we go. Mm-hmm, actually, does that reach her? Nah, it doesn't reach. I'll do it. Mm-hmm, and one more dose of that. And you're done for. Nice job, Argenta. Very, very nice job. You're already coming around. All right, that's done, that's done. We don't need any of that. What's that? Shock baton, we don't need that. We don't need any shotguns either. Regular flex chest plate. Um, this might actually be useful. We'll take two of those in fact, because I'm not sure if we need those. All right. Nothing over here, nothing over here that we need to get. Excellent. No, no, no. This master crafted patella ornament is not fit for a servitor. It does kind of irritate me the way he keeps saying that, to be honest with you. Out of all the ad libs that the party members have, <laughs> I think I find his to be Resume one of the most start. annoying. Or at least that particular one. Um, no, I don't need. I don't need that. Something ominous lurks ahead. Uh oh, what are you? Eyes, my eyes. Please give them back to me, even one. That doesn't seem very cool. I'll chart a course for you. Written on the side of the shuttle in pilot's lowly slang are the words, Do not touch a shipment of thighs to the blessed Lord Captain Caligos Werner scale. Perhaps there is something worth your attention in this shuttle. Commander Cloak. Increase the range of officer archetype abilities by one cell. I don't mind if I do. And this gives a, a good opportunity. None of us are using flamers. None of us are using auto guns. 
Um, is the power maul better than the sword that he has? Sword does more damage, but it has way less. Oh, oh, and the power maul lets him do the power swing. Oh yeah, let's go ahead and do that then. Um, you know, just in case the sword is better. In some cases, we'll keep it around. But yeah. Oh, we really need to get you some heavy armor. Oh, but you can't even wear heavy armor yet. So we just need to keep it in mind that sooner or later we need to get you the heavy armor. It's hurting my soul. Keep it. <laughs> Seeing this little paltry armor you're working with. All right. And yeah, we don't need that. Now, this one. Range attacks. Decrease dodge. She can make use of that. And officer archetypes. Can make use of that. Fellowship. Eh, she doesn't really use it, but she'll take it. One fire grenade. A bunch of these grenades. You'll take two of them as well. Might as well. You'll take a couple of them. And all right. Give up the goods. That's more cargo. Okay. Say no more. Planet completely overrun. Why? Uh oh. The eyes lie. The final dawn purifies vision. Folks, how about you don't come any closer and I don't shoot you? Gain true vision. Renounce false sight. All will be revealed. Ooh, is this Abelard handling business? Ooh, that, that looked uh, extremely painful. <laughs> The young, shaggy-haired soldier is still pale. Nonetheless, as you approach, he holsters his pistol, the hallmark of good discipline. He gives you a somewhat frightened but genuine smile. Thank you, my lord. You arrived in the nick of time. I don't know what those babbling creeps wanted with me, but it definitely wasn't anything good. Who are you? Lucky Jasper, the governor's aide and personal box operator. I was dispatched to the starport on per special orders. The young man proclaims, desperately trying to tame his tousled hair. Are you unharmed, soldier? All thanks to you, my lord. Those blind lunatics are all over the city right now. These rebels, damn them to the void, go around maiming anyone they get their hands on and scorching their eyes. Then they lead the poor sods driven mad by the pain to wander the streets, babbling nonsense. He lowers his voice and adds with gravity. The command doesn't want anyone to talk about it, but I've heard whispers that it's not just some nonsense. It's, ac it's heresy, actual heresy, because listening to it scrambles your brain. It made one patrolman freeze in his tracks while the blind mob got hold of him and carried him from his post off to who knows where. And what exactly were you doing here on your own? Following Governor Medina's special instructions, namely, he grits his teeth with a pained expression, furrowing his brow. Oh, right. It's a secret assignment. I can't talk about it. What if what you know is priceless intelligence and you were to die before you could relate it to anyone? Well, that would make me a saboteur and a traitor, wouldn't it? Yes, you're right. This is an emergency. He looks relieved. So, why did they send you to the starport? I'm supposed to deliver updated box codes and, how should I put it, assess the situation. The planet is a real mess at the moment. The rebels have found their way into our Voxnet and are now eavesdropping. This made proper communication impossible. The hallowed electrodynamic Cenobium had sent out a distress call before it went dark. And who even knows what's happening in the system? There's been a riot on Rikaida Phila, the prison planetoid. Urak 5 station is silent, although the navigators there have always been a reclusive bunch. I was hoping I'd be lucky enough to run into a pilot or the captain here who could give me an update, but that's hardly a possibility right now. The rebels are blasting anything that tries to land out of the sky with their damn cannon. Awareness. He stops talking, a little too abruptly. Tell me about Urek 5. There's not much anyone can tell you about it. That station belongs to the Navis Nobilite, uh, Nobilite themselves. Emperor knows what they do up there, or who even lives there. They scorn ordinary folk. The only person they're willing to grace with an audience is the esteemed Evane Winterscale. 
It is beginning to sound like he is complaining. That place is creepy. They say they order shuttles with servants from my cabin north on a regular basis. I guess they're too important up there to change filters and clean compartments themselves, huh? Except, I've never met anyone who has served there. It's, no, it's like no one ever comes back. Your brothers and sisters lived and died for a great cause, serving a navigator house, and therefore all of the Imperium. It is a high honor, one that few could bear. Only now does Jasper notice Cassia, and his eyes go wide with fear. He opens and closes his mouth a few times helplessly, like a fish unable to utter a sound. Instead, he just nods nervously. Who is Evane Winterscale? The esteemed and honorable scion of blessed rogue trader Caligos Winterscale, master of the Rykat system. At the behest of his illustrious father, or grandfather, or uncle, well, his illustrious relative, Lord Evane took up residence on Rykat Menorahs. Jasper's face betrays a fierce inner struggle before he blurts out, You know what I think? I find it curious that Bless Caligos didn't make him the ruler of our world. Lord Evane is his blood, but it's the governor who rules us. Then why do you think he sent him here? I think he's been exiled. Do you think the governor can handle the rebellion? Jasper mumbles evasively. Well, obviously, I'm not some pessimist to say otherwise. I won't tell anyone. You really won't? Well then, if you ask me, things are pretty rotten. His words come flying at the rate of stubborn fire. Those rebels are strange. We would have easily quelled a normal riot. We're not some commoners, Rikadins, the naval elite of House Winterscale. But those people, they're vicious. They know no fear. And their attacks, they're so precise. It's like they know what's going to happen ahead of time. The command executed seven officers on suspicion of espionage, but it's not about spying. They say the leader of the rebels is some two-faced Aurora who can see into the future. Now, she's the real danger. The door, Adira scoffs and rubs her hands together in excitement. She can see into the future, is that right? We'll see about that. She's up against the wrong psyker. My breezy whispers may be vague, but they've not failed me once. I can tell you without asking my ethereal friends that our future doesn't look too bright now that the Lord Captain is involved. Now, she says all that, but didn't they just fail her in figuring out Theodore's murderers? But anyway, <laughs> I am looking for an interrogator of the Inquisition who may have arrived on this planet. Have you heard of anyone matching that description? Jasper's face quickly turns gray as he says, I have, but I don't know where he is now. I'm sorry, but I don't like discussing the affairs of the Inquisition. There is something else you are hiding from me, isn't there? More classified secrets? Jasper looks away. It's nothing classified, just personal. There's another reason why I'm here. My betrothed is missing, Ray Quell Vicari, the esteemed Evan Winterscale's personal pilot. When the riot reports came from Rakata Philia, Lord Evane headed there personally. Then this rebellion started down here, and we lost communication. No one knows how they're doing up there. You know what I'm afraid of? that they'll come back, and those rebel scumbags will shoot them out of the sky. I wanted to find a place that's high up, set up a boxcaster there, and send them a transmission. The sky is closed off, didn't try to land, but I didn't make it in time. Those blind dogs chased after me, and as I was running, I tripped and broke the caster. He hangs his head sadly. I worry for her. She's an excellent pilot, but I still worry. Abelard shakes his head disapprovingly, but his eyes are understanding. That is why all members of a Voidship clan share the same employment. No matter how devoted a servant of the Emperor is to their duty, there is always the danger that family ties might disrupt regulations and order. Pray not for her survival, but for an honorable death, should it come to it. Forgive me, my lord, but my wish to see my Raquel again. She's... she's everything to me. I have no more questions. It was my pleasure to be of service to you, my lord. It's been nice to chat someone normal. He glances warily at the body of the nearest blinded lunatic. Uh, we won't choose the main option. The lo Lord Icelander actually takes pride in being very persuasive, so he won't punish the poor lad for finding him persuasive and charming. I must take my leave. 
You're right. We shouldn't stay here. We might run into rebels. I'll go find a safe place to watch the sky for any landing shuttles. May the Emperor protect you, my lord. All right. And his back combat sweet quins found him. To traverse the unknown. See if I can find his uh his boo thing somewhere around here at some point. Nothing back there. Alright, let's do a full save. And then what's next? Ooh, we got another talent. What's this one for? Let me consult my trusty build. Lasting impression. What's that do? Oh, half the bonus remains. Yep, absolutely. And then definitely persuasion. Complete that. You. And you can't do athletics anymore. Medikai it is. And I already got contempt. I already got thick skin. Do I want living shield? Enemies with rings. I gotta start looking at some of your stuff. I don't know what I want from here at all. Charge and push. Not attack this turn. They gain 10 plus Twice the toughness bonus armor. Hmm. Charge is last and not affect this bonus. I gotta remember to take that last. How many two more talents will I get? One. Okay, so when I get up here, I, I'll make that the last talent that I take. Doesn't help me now, but it'll be tremendous when I become a vanguard. Tax of opportunity, crowd kill, air attack, rigorous training, interception. When a warrior parries an attack, their next warrior archetype ability calls one AP or less. I'm going to be a parrying attacks left and right. That'll help. Whenever the warrior is hit while under the endure effect, their damage deflection is increased by one until the warrior's next turn. Ah, uh, no, nah, I don't like that. Where it gains toughness bonus, damage deflection against the first attack made by every enemy this combat oh yeah i forgot about that oh i really need to do a build for him so i can make sure his stuff is right what about you darling is it are you level 10 yet let's check and see why don't i see that line of talents where is that here we go siren no it's not level 10 it must be maybe the next one Oh, wait, seven, so we're in the eight. So, okay, so two more. Every Perils of the Warp increases momentum by... I don't want Perils of the Warp. Triggering Psychic Phenomenon. The Psyker's next Psychic Power calls one less action point. Mm-mm. For some reason, the ally becomes the target of Psychic Power. This ally gains plus 10 weapon skill and plus and ballistic skill until the end of combat. I'm not keeping her around, so actually this will be nice for the amount of uh, period of time that I do keep her. It will not die. Overpower. Flawless plan. What's this? Every nice sexual dodge and or parry by the Psyker and the allies can buy. Plus two additional AP on the next turn. First dot. Hold on. Hmm. There's a siren right outside my uh right outside my window. Apologies if that's bleeding through. Why well, suffers a critical hit because of normal hit instead. Hmm. That's interesting. Many sources other than aftershot that target target suffers half as much mental damage at the end of his next turn. You know what? That'll be useful later on. Why not? You, what did you choose last time? You did that, okay. We already got rapid reload. We already got second skin, right? Um, we are, do we already get, we do not have enough bullets for everyone. Demolition, that's easy. You, what do I want for you? Steel voice. Um, I already, you're getting dodged from perception, right? Okay. Wow, she's already at 85%. That's kind of wild. Um, of course, travel plus two perception. Blood augury, enemies damaged by you, ebb and flow. Every even turn, you gain an additional action point. Every odd turn, 
you gain 20 perception. Uh, ebb and flow, I guess so, yeah. That, that makes sense, probably. Mastery of time, open to the warp. Stable rounds. Oh, every, whenever the navigator uses a navigator's ability, veil degradation is reduced by one. Um, we're not going to go really crazy with... With, uh, you know what? Okay, I'm not going to take that now, but I'll take that next. Not persuasion, not commerce. What do we do with you? Awareness, because your perception is going to be pretty high, so that should be useful. All right, finally, that's all done. Let me check these items one more time. We're good, right? We're good, right? Yep, okay. All right, quick save. Let's get into another fight. And, yep, you're an enemy. Tell me I serve the dynasty. I warn you if I hear anything. So there's you. Oh, there, there we go. There's more of y'all over here. Should I divine our next step? Why? There we go. Doom, 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 doom. Okay, doom. Start. All right, won't be long before she's uh, ready for round two. Put you here. Uh, won't be long before Abelard is ready as well. Put you over here. Cassia, you're going up next. We'll put you over here though until you're ready. You, ooh, you're not gonna be ready for a while, so we'll put you over here. Uh, oh, Cassia. Whoops. I almost forgot about you, darling. My apologies. Uh, yeah, put you over here for now. Because it's going to be a while before it's your turn. Oh, I forgot. Wait, he gets a turn right up front. So... I forgot. Does he get movement points on that turn, though? We'll see in a moment. Uh... He does, but it wouldn't have been enough to get into cover anyway. Alright. Let's give a deer another chance. Darling, you were supposed to wipe them out. Thank you. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Good looking out. And I'll chill up here. What you'll do what you do. Uh-huh. Agitating a bunch of people. We don't appreciate it. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, he actually hit Lord High Slander. That is highly uncool <laughs> I don't appreciate that one bit not a single bit um um yeah I mean she could do more damage if she headed out there but I don't want I kind of don't want to do that yeah because that there's the, also that over here yeah she'll head out when She's got a uh, better advantage. Uh, you know what? Re Rebel Agitated, you can come closer, though. Oh, I'm a fan of that power. I am a fan. What, of course. Mm-hmm. Man, you, yep. Is? All right. As good as that's going to get. And he will... A tactically sound approach. Tactically sound approach. Um, you will go here. Ooh. I didn't appreciate that at all. If I didn't need that other, uh, action point, I'd show you how little I, I appreciate that. But he's about to get it help, so he needs this extra done. protection. So we're going to chill on that for now. One, one, one's all the way around. Um, you know what? She should be able... She goes here. Yep, she could do that. Excellent. Um, so yeah, we'll do that. Excellent. Some of 
that. Recharge, excellent. 19%, 28%, 57%, 57. Uh, he's right in front. I don't care about him all that much. So, yeah, let's do that. Ah, uh, miss. Oh, well. Might as well take that. A little extra momentum. Um, I keep forgetting to, uh, here, I'm going to designate you as my servant, Adira. Then I'm going to give you some more characteristics. And then I'm going to get you moving. Can you move into cover? Is that possible? Uh, kind of, sort of. May we descend the future on the battlefield. All right, you got two action points, so yeah, we'll use them here. What? I was about to say, she should absolutely be able to. Okay, and she healed four we people do. this way. Excellent. Um, I'm not a particularly big fan of her uh, super in this situation. I would be. For Ooh, yep, they'll let me use it for him. There we go. And he, no, not power swing. Oh yeah, power swing. Oh, it's not gonna, yeah, it's not gonna uh, give us another first virtu versatility. Victory is <laughs> All right, fine. Come on, I'm tired. I'm getting tired Indeed. of you, bro. Ready Thank us. you. Good lord. What? Um. Oh, it's not gonna let him move anywhere. That's not the Seneschal's job. At your beck and call. I took care of this. Oh, well. That'll work. And he'll move a bit closer. And that's all she wrote. Perry, excellent job. Excellent job. Um. You know what? First, we'll do this. If I may. Cause you, you could go ahead and get rid of him, right? But using this, right, it doesn't attack both. So, first, get rid of him. And actually, I keep forgetting about this dude over here. But okay. accustomed to being ordered around good enough and there we go oh he did not parry that come on Ooh, smoke it right there. That's a thing. Ooh. he came out of nowhere at least it felt like it. Damn, Adira. What's taking this too so long to act? Go ahead and do what you're gonna do. Actually, it's him who's taking so long to act. Now that I think about it, right? Yeah, it's him. What you doing, playboy? Let's give it a second, see if it'll catch up. Um, she's in a really bad spot. And she can't even use, um, med packs. Hmm. And... Yep, doing this again. They let you know. Uh, see those little swords above their head? So, yeah, if I do this, it's definitely gonna, uh, uh, draw attacks of opportunity. And this would damage me anyway, no matter what. So, yeah, there's no good options here. Give you that. We'll Give do. Give you that. Give herself an opportunity to be able to dodge it. And 
I mean, I guess she could do this. Oh. Anything else? Oh, wow. You know, I just <laughs> never even thought about that, to be honest with you. Uh, no can do. Why won't it let me use my primary attack? That's weird. You know what? We're gonna... No, we'll let we'll let a uh, uh, what's her name deal with that. I will do my duty. Argenta, we'll let Argenta deal with with it that guy hanging out there. Indeed, one your target. Excellent. Ah, uh, but he, he can't move anywhere. Victory is imminent. Excellent. Now, just to be sure. Huh. Oh, we can still attack him. Okay, I fine. Am his will made manifest. All right. Faith without Ooh, deeds only 40%. Is oh, still made it happen. Judgment. Nice job, gentlemen. Nice job. Very nice job. Uh oh. I wonder if this guy's bugged. I act. It could be she's just missing. I'll do it. But. I find it doubtful considering it's not giving me percentage, it's not um Let's find out. Um You You <laughs> I've seen worse battles than this in my time. And you and okay. Yep, not attacking. That's not good. Um, what about if she Isn't this a job tries to decides? draw him out? Can she do that? Wait, actually, whoops, I just realized it's saying zero up here. So it's not even counting him as a uh as an enemy. Okay, that's a bug. Mm-hmm. One moment, please. It is all B, right? Pre just pressed all B. There we go. Uh, I probably didn't hold it in. My bad. Um, localization, I guess. Maybe. And the fight doesn't recognize the foe standing in front of Abelard as an enemy. Uh, combat won't end. Because it believes all the enemies have been defeated and I cannot deal enemy in front of Abelard any damage it appears to partially phase into the wall all right hopefully that gives them ah uh, game break crashes phase game breaking right it's, it's forcing me to uh reload again All right. Unfortunately, we'll have to do that fight again. Even more unfortunately, I'm not sure what I could have done to avoid that. So we'll just give it our best shot, I guess. I guess. All right. Oh, let's go down here again. Did you want something? Yeah. Dara. I dare not provoke the whispers. Come on now. There we go. Your fool failed me. Oh, fool. I will take you down. All right, now. Uh, Argenta, Cassia, Abelard, me, you know what, I'm gonna go full cover this time, because last time, one of them shot the crap out of me, and it was not cool. Alright, who was it that went beyond that wall before? I don't even see him at first. Oh, so this guy, this is the one that phased in. 
All right, interesting. Again, still not sure what to do about that, but hopefully it just doesn't happen this time. Um, nope, that doesn't cause a better reaction. Bip, 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 bip. And that's done. And that's done. And you know what? Uh, I won't speed the characters up uh, this time either. Because I'm not sure if that maybe contributed to it. So we're just going to let them play out normally. And that'll also help me see if I've done something that caused that character to run back there and then get stuck. So I can hopefully avoid it for next time. We got that guy, but yeah, you know what? That guy makes the most sense. Can I reach him? I can reach him. And you could use some more stacks. And you could use some more of this. What, of course. And then you could use some Anything of this. Is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, there we go. He's coming forward, so that automatically is going to help, even though he's doing a wee bit of damage to me, but it's all right. Um, I don't want to do... Well, you know what, actually... Oh, that's why I forget. I keep uh, because on that extra turn you can't use it, and so I um, don't get a chance until my second turn. It's, it hasn't been that I've been uh, forgetting it. Okay, cool. All right, now you can't. Yeah, that doesn't do much. I can't reach him. So, so yeah, this is about as good as it's gonna get. And I should. Yep, I can obliterate you with this. What an unfortunate turn Excellent. And then you. 90%. Oh, we can take you out. There we go. And all these people come forward. Excellent. And then all these people for come forward. That's also excellent. I got no problems with any of this. We'll go where this is the guy all the way back there and this is the guy over here so yeah he'll go over here my place is at the fall and there we go oh yeah this is excellent 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 oh and he gets this right um you want to do this at first back and yeah then we'll do this <laughs> no matter the cost and then we'll do this. It will be done. Oh, you, you parrying in. There we go. All right, let's go in order. Uh, yep, this is the guy then. Mm -hmm. Two percent. Yep. And there we go. And you better not go nowhere. And there we are. Um. Hmm. Should. What is the problem? 23. 37. Right, let's that see what happens. For the exactly. I is agree. Doubt is for the weak. Faith without deeds is worthless. Oh, it won't let me target him. That's interesting. I'll do it. As the Emperor commands, I act. Nice little chunk. There we go. Um. Um, do I want. I really. Uh, you know what? I do kind of want to go out here. Drowned in scarlet. Yep. Because I want all Me. of it. If you insist, you're beaten. There we go. Oh, he attacked Abelard. But it didn't, it didn't say it would hit Abelard. That's weird. And it didn't stun any of them either. That's unfortunate. Um, you know what? I like the idea. I can't give him an extra turn. And I probably can't give her an extra. Uh, I could give her an extra turn, actually. Does she have line of sight on any of these guys? She's probably not close enough. So, you know, I'll just give Isn't you that. Isn't this a job for the serfs? 
Then I'll give you that. Excellent. Oh, yeah. Very effective turn overall. Just a minor setback. Just a minor setback. Oh, excellent. I'll absolutely take that. Excellent. And then, I'll also tell you, you need to come forward. You need to spend all your energy and effort coming forward. Because we are about tired of you, sir. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. You're trying to run back to that wall. I'm not interested. Um, oh, look at that. You know what? You go ahead and do that. That's not what I want. I want to get him here. He better be able to charge from there. Someone else can oh, do this. Fine, whatever. Do that. Oh yeah. Woo! Very, very nice job, Abelard. Very pleased with you. Is working out quite, quite nicely. All right, don't need any of this stuff. Armor, body glove, but the boots, whatever's going on with that, I'll take it. We will take all that. Quick save. Excellent. We should deal with this. At first, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again, and all that good stuff. The world is full of colors I have never seen before. Cargo. Mm -hmm. Attention to detail is the key to success. Yeah, that all looked like stuff I could let go. The turret was placed in a great hurry, but the Technomat never had the chance to activate it. Alright, looks like we could continue on that way, so we should probably check to see what this is. Um, ooh, large med kit along with a melter charge. I'm pretty sure there was not a large med kit here before. Pretty sure I didn't start seeing them until late act two, so they must have moved things around a little bit, or maybe that's just a one-off. Judging by the caustic smell and oily stains, Prometheum was previously stored here. It must have fallen into the hands of the heretics. I'll guide your vessel and lead you on your way. Tech use, save this. Pick the lock and successful. And light armor, but this does some extra 10% parry chance against melee attacks and plus five agility. Sure, I'll take it. And I guess I'll take it. This is just regular. Old. Yep. All right. I've never wondered so much before. Stick with me, kid. I'll have you going places. All right. Ajunta, don't you dare embarrass me. Uh, I thought I made myself very clear. The Emperor favors me today. I'm still new to the art of exploring. Duty prevails. There we go. The insurgents walked in a crowd right across the mine barriers, seemingly oblivious to the fear of death. Uh-oh. Whoa. Change is coming. The edge is nigh. The blinded ones are harmless. No sense in shooting them and drawing attention. Fire on the nearest target! Don't kill the tech priest! We need to take him alive! Well, that's one way to deal with your enemies.
The man dressed in crimson should not have survived an explosion like that. However, he is alive. You hear the wheezing of the respirator that covers half of his face. Not another step. He has voice acting now. Fantastic. Flee, for I am death. By the throne, what is that servant of the Omnissiah made of? Adamantine? Ugh, blast it. Abelar clutches his head as his ocular implant is racked with a wave of interference. I am the road trader Lord High Slander von Valencius. I mean you no know ill. I identify you as a member of a high stratum belonging to Road Trader House von Valencius. I am detecting no need for confrontation. The convoy received an order to meet you. It is no longer functional. Therefore, I propose that we continue to advance to the rendezvous point with the governor's soldiers. The tech priest stares resolutely forward, his mechandrite tentacles rising gracefully around his haunt's figure, which is illuminated by the flames of the smoldering remains of the machine. Who are you? I identify as Magus Pascal the name of the priesthood of Mars. By the grace of the Omnissiah, I am currently assigned to the maintenance personnel of the station Altar Templum Calixis X17. Altar Templum Calixis. I have heard the name before. The station appears on House Orcelio's star charts in the Furibunda system. Not far from the Void Colony of Footfall. You have traveled a long way to come here, esteemed Magos. Point at the exploded machine. How did you manage to kill off a slew of people and blow up a sacred machine without even laying a finger on it? I... This was my doing. The voices are being weird about him. They're saying garbled, conflicting things. Like they're talking about completely different people. But he's not a threat to you. Even if that's a bit hard to believe after all the fireworks. You do not even know how you call such an explosion? But before we move on, I, I just gotta reiterate again, I mentioned this on the live stream. I think Adira's voice acting is fantastic in this game. I think it does so much to make her character more endearing than if you just read the words. She is... Whoever this lady is, she's doing a great job. The Omnissiah granted me a revelation. The spirit of this machine was dying, but it wished to perform a service, for such was its design. I sensed this and appealed to it. I do not know how I did it. I merely followed my intuition. The understanding granted by the Omnissiah was not permanent. It has left me. The tech priest appears shaken. Why do you wish to see the governor? I came here to carry out a sacred mission. My mentor, Archmagus Amonat, summoned me, and I hastened to answer his call. But the rabble's unrest prevented our meeting, and I was on my way to Governor Medina to determine my mentor's current location. My escort was ordered by their commander to discontinue their movement and await to be merged with your group. Then, due to their incompetence, they let themselves be killed. It was an unacceptable complication to my task. <laughs> if the tech priest's voice carried any compassion for the dead, the dry words that crackled from his Vox system did not convey a shred of it. <laughs> you must be quite devoted to your mentor to be willing to wade into this mess for him. Cessation of vital functions is an unavoidable phenomenon, and therefore an insignificant one. The doctrine of worship repudiates the fear of death. With my mentor's words, the Omnicide gives me the algorithm for redemption and triumph in service. I will be redeemed, and I will triumph. Hmm. I invite you to join my retinue. Acknowledged. Predicting successful and mutually beneficial cooperation. 
So do I. All right. Now we have yet another party member. Good, 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 good stuff. Three, four, five, six. So yeah, now we got a full crew too. Just nice all the way around. Any people over there? No. Okay, cool. Quiet. They're trying to tell me something. This ocular implant was a worthwhile investment. Blessed be the road that we take. An entire procession of cargo servitors was destroyed by gunfire, and not a single one of them attempted to flee. Yikes. Hey, what's that? And who are you? Darkness is coming. The final dawn. Ooh! I wonder if this is a bolter upgrade or just a regular bolter. How it might can just one be a regular find bolter. The right way without it. his light? Just in case you wanted to use a bolter as well. Your name. Sometimes. Okay. I wonder to what extent our perception of the Empyrean differs. Every one of the dead have had their eyes ruthlessly burned. Ooh. I'm glad that I never have to look at it. No offense, Cass, but I'll do just fine without an eyeball in the middle of my forehead. Awesome. Okay, so um, the whole time during the beta, any banter that your party members had, it was just text boxes. They, You didn't actually hear voice acting. So it looks Most like they finally weeks. changed that. Good, 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 good stuff. All right. Here. Ooh, what's that? Sin skin, 25%. 5% dodge if the wearer's agility is more than 40. Interesting. I'll chart a course for you. All right. Skull. And let's see about leveling him up. Um, intelligence. And I have no clue. What does he have down here? The first attack in combat deals additional damage equal to intelligence bonus. It's decreased in intelligence. Hmm, that's interesting. Forge World characters gain toughness bonus deflection against the burning effect of flame weapons while wearing heavy armor. Cannot fall prone. Forge World characters gain a stack of 10% bonus to hit chance to dodge reduction uh, against any target they hit with a single target attack. Successful critical hits from single target attacks increase the hit chance to dodge reduction by 20%. That's interesting. Calculated relations. Forge World characters can use persuasion, coercion, and commerce based on intelligence instead of fellowship. It's interesting as well, but Pillar, Pinnacle of Weaponry sounds like the one that appeals to me the most. But, oh, you know what? His axe is power weapon, and I want a plasma weapon, so this is possible. Uh, am I going to use him as melee or as ranged. I kind of want to, uh, you know, at, at first, at least we'll probably, we'll probably use him in melee at first. So yeah, fine. And then what is this? Weak body, weak soul. I like that, right? Reduces toughness and willpower. Hmm. I do like that. What's tired of excellence? Triggers an exploit for its target. Instant exposure. What's the one? Oh, he, he comes with passive learning. On their first turn in combat, the operative randomly distributes the same. Yep, that's the one I wanted. Okay, so he automatically comes with passive learning now. Sharpshooter, ballistic calculation, joint offense. The operative's allies gain operative's intelligence bonus 
Um, what's that it's supposed to be? Had their intelligence bonus to critical hit chance, to hit chance, a critical hit chance when attacking targets affected by exploits. Hmm. It's not crazy high now, but actually we're about to increase. Yep, we're about to increase the intelligence even more. Let's go ahead and just take this. Um, joint analysis until the operator's next turn. Their allies attacks also remove exploits and deal intelligence bonus more damage. Yeah, it's hard to imagine not using that. Tech use, definitely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll take weak body, weak soul. Help when dealing with the bosses. Um, I kind of want to take combat master, even though, you know what? No, because long term, he's going to be ranged. So no point in doing that. Oh, I do want, you know what? I'll take grenadier, actually. All right. And then let's go here. What does he come equipped with? Yeah, he's only got a regular lost weapon for now, but he's got a power axe. A holy vestment, logic, 10% armor, uh, twice part machine rank to tech use. Interesting. All right, that's 25% to armor. And this is only 15%. You're moving around in front a lot too, though. Yep. 5% on uh, dodge with the aware's agility is more than 40. Per is more than 40. She's not going to have that. But she could build up to that potentially. You, but you know what? I'm not going to be keeping her. So it really doesn't matter no more than what. And you could use it the most. So add the category. Bolter. This is the same type of bolter you got, isn't it? Oh, no. Wait. Uh, it's actually. Ooh, but it's got one less rate of fire. Why? 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 But. I hate that. I hate that. It does significantly more damage, but the rate of fire goes down. Uh, it's all right. I got ways of making up rate of fire anyway, so we'll, we'll, we'll hang on to this just in case. Just in case I decide it's something I can't let go of. Whenever the wearer deals two damage to an enemy, the wearer has a 25% chance to gain two movement points. He usually needs to move the most, so we'll just give it to him. Just for a general principle. I don't like having 13 up there, so we'll pull one down just for that. And can you, you can't even use my kits either. Yep. All right. Excellent. And now we are ready to move forward. Oh, wait. No, we're not. One more thing. Our formation is probably all off. Oh, yeah. He should not be in front. He could be in front for now. We'll change that long term. She can be secondary. She can be secondary. When we finally get the uh, other abilities we need, we'll change it up again. Alert. Profane violation of the algorithm. Hmm. They changed this. There used to be people around the, uh, Something around the turrets. Why, 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 thanks for the warning, Adira. Mm-hmm. All right. Really seems like I should be able to hide behind the turrets as cover. But they say no, so, all right. Hmm. Argenta is gonna be going soon so is so wait it's Argenta then Adira then the turrets okay um then Cassia and huh, I have a large last at a party huh interesting You, you definitely need to be up somewhere else to the side. 
Oh, that's right, I forgot. You're gonna be able to go first regardless. Anything else? Mm hmm. Just make sure she can get behind cover. Doubt is for the weak. All right. And now. As the Emperor commands, I act. You, my Emperor. Ooh. I'll do it. Let's get some more of that extra momentum. Since we got Faith a ton of people deeds, all around us. That is momentum. Cover me. Doom, 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 doom. On it. Be strong. And you, you're kind of just of hanging course. around out there. Let's make sure you get some extra. And you, you're the sniper, so let's make sure you run up. And yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh oh. Uh, Argenta just got obliterated. I didn't realize that's how it worked. Ah, oh, crap. And she got trauma from it. Nah, I'm not eating that. I swear it shot around around them last time, but maybe I just so happened to look out. All right, so maybe that means you have to place, you need to place your party members along the sides. Can't have them directly in the middle like this. That's fine. He will go all the way out over here. Abelard comes over here. Adara. Sure, it comes over here. Oh, yeah, it's going to be completely different. Than oh, wait, wait, wait. Why Why are you placing it in, in directly in front of the turret like a dummy? So, in fact, here, he'll come to the side over here. Because, right, that should be outside of where they place it. In fact, if you're nine here, right, you're going to be behind. You're, you're going to be behind over there. Argenta needs to be able to to be close enough to see the enemy at least. She'll come over here. Cassia will also come over here. So suppose Pascal will come over here as well. And then let's see what happens. Lord Icelander. Um... This is gonna be a dead turn, it feels like. Yeah, well, I'm not completely dead here. Here's what we'll do. Do that and do that. There we go. She'll be out the way. All right, now, Junta. Um, yep, this works for me. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And we'll do one more of these. 34%, 34. I don't have to do. Oh well. As the Emperor oh, commands, perfect. I act. And there we go. Now the that's one. And the other one. Excellent. Ooh, 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 ooh. Just awesome all the way around. All right, now Cassia. She's over here. Emperor, give me strength. Give me strength. I'm not accustomed to being ordered. Fantastic. 
And who do we want? Let's go ahead and give it to her. I shall prevail. What is this foreboding? Anything is. What an unfortunate turn of fate. Absolutely fantastic. There we go. Much better. Much, much better. Okay. Not if such is the Emperor's will. If such is the Emperor's will. Ah, nothing I need over there. Excellent. The world is full of colors I have never seen before. Excellent. All right. We have cleared out the dock and now can advance into the street. Very, very good progress. Awesome. Okay. I just came in from here. That means, yep, I am supposed to go up the streets. The upper way extends across a wide bridge, which is suspended high above the roiling waters of the river below. The bridge is densely packed with imposing and ostentatious buildings designed to flatter. Designed to. What the hell? For some reason, it's not giving me that dialogue. Interesting. Divine to flatter the nobles, most Say likely. No more. The upper crust. All right. I think that's been enough for our one day. Hopefully, you all enjoyed this episode. I think we made some very good progress through the game. And I am looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care.